Jesus. That the sick are healed in the name of Jesus. That God will bring deliverance through the power of the name of Jesus. He doesn't mind you talking about God. I believe in God too, brother. But what do you know about Jesus Christ? Oh, he was a good man. No, no, no. He's the son of God. He is God made flesh and he dwelt among us and we beheld his glory as that of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. He is the way, the truth, and the life. He is the Alpha, he's the Omega, he's the beginning and he is the end. He is the everlasting Father, he's the Prince of Peace. He is, a, come on now. Can I talk about Jesus this morning? He walked on water, he healed the sick, he, he raised the dead, he caused the blind to see. He died for my sins, got up in the grave, then got up out of the grave, is sitting on the right hand of the Father. He is my advocate. He is the one that upholds me. He's the one that strengthens me. He's the one that keeps me growing. He's the one that breathes life into me. Jesus Christ is the only wise God, the only Prince of Peace. Can I have an amen, y'all? Come on, y'all. We got to understand that he's not just a man, a good guy, you know, a good guru. No. He created the heavens and the earth. He stuck the stars in their place. And all things were made by him and through him. And there was not anything made that was made that was not made without his influence and power. Woo! Glory to God. I thank God that I know Jesus. See, I was, I was just going to try to teach this message this morning. But I'm telling you, we got to get this in. But people are afraid to talk about Jesus in their churches. We've kicked him out the church. And we're insecure. And we don't understand that they don't know us, but that's okay because they didn't know him. But I'm going to identify with him. And now people, they, they regulate the talk about Jesus to the background. But there's an offense. He says that Jesus is a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense. People get offended when you talk about Jesus. But, but you're going to have to take it because this is all we got. There is no other name given among men by which men must be saved. It's Jesus Christ. And we have to get back to it. Well, now, oh, wait, brother, we don't want to be too pushy and offensive to people. We don't want to, you know, we, we don't want to go overboard talking about Jesus. You know, we want them to come in. We want people to come in. Well, <laughs> I mean, why are we here? This isn't a social club. We're trying to get people saved and filled with the Holy Ghost and get redeemed and get brought out of hell's grips. Can I have an amen? We got to talk about Jesus in the church again. We've had all these cute services and people have cute services and then people just cute services. Oh, it was just a nice service. But did you hear about Jesus? Well, he didn't really open his Bible. He was talking about. No, we, I'm, I'm serious, y'all. We got to talk about this because this is what's destroying people's lives and it's hurting the body of Christ. Because we were worried about what somebody, and now musicians are doing it. They used to sing about Jesus. They used to rap about Jesus. They used to sing about Jesus all day. Now it's, I'm um, him and God. And, and th can you mention Jesus at all in any of the songs? Now, I'm not against, now let me say this. I'm not against people that are clear. This is what I do. I'm not going to be singing about Jesus all the time. This is how, you know, I'm, 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 my stuff is clean, but I'm not going to be going overboard. That's just not my style. I, okay, I get you. I got you. Okay, I understand that. But if you're going to start, if you're going to start off singing about Jesus, and then the church props you up, and then when you get propped, popular and enough momentum you start phasing Jesus out 
so you can get the world to embrace you. Now, we got to talk. We got to talk, or at least explain it to me. Because what happens is, people have gone, and you guys know this, people have used and abused the church. A lot of these musicians, people start off in the church singing about God, and then they just, ah. Like I said, if that's where you're at, that's fine. But, but don't use the church and then turn around because you want to become popular, and now you don't want nothing to do with the church. Can I preach it, y'all? Because this is what happens. We get to a place where we're so insecure that if you're going to do that, fine. Let's, let's roll. We got you. But if you hear and then you singing in the choir and you love God and you singing in the choir and then now all of a sudden you don't want to talk anything about God. You don't want to mention him. You don't want to talk about him anymore because some some executive is telling you that that this isn't going to help you become popular. can't mention God at all. Well, wait a minute. He saved me. I, I may not be preacher or anything like this, but I want people to know that I am, I am, I'm a, I'm a woman of God. I'm a man of God. But you watch them. And I can name names. Y'all know them. They started off and then they don't care. They want popularity. But Jesus is a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense. They stumble being disobedient to the word to which they were also appointed. But you are a chosen generation. It's the reason why they don't know us. Because we're a chosen generation. That God is taking generations out of a generation. Out of the generation. And he's drawing them to himself to become a generation. And so what happens is we have to see that it's hard for people to know us. If God is drawing us out into something that he's established. He says you are a chosen generation. Jesus will have a generation that is sanctified, that is holy, that loves him, will not compromise, and will do what God is asking them to do for his glory in the earth. And this generation is multi-generational. It's a people that have been called out, that he's established. That have responded, let me say this, have responded to his call. You are a chosen generation. And we have to embrace that aspect of ministry. That I'm, the world doesn't know me because I'm a chosen generation. Look what he says here. A royal priesthood. This is number two. You're a chosen generation, number one. Number two, you're a royal priesthood. Every single person in this room, there is a priestly aspect to your ministry and to who you are before God. You're called to represent man before God and represent God before man. You're, you're called to be a person that upholds God's righteous standard in the earth and to be in a representative before people. This is what God likes. This is what he doesn't like. This is what he, and then you turn around and say, well, listen, as a person, God, my job is to pray and to intercede for these people who are trying to get to know you. And are con trying to be drawn to you. But we have to see ourselves as a royal priesthood. Now I like this. He says a royal priesthood. So what happens is I have to start seeing myself, like I said last week, as royalty. That God has drawn me to him and he has made me his child. And that I am a child of the most high God. It doesn't mean that I become lifted up with pride and arrogance. But it does mean I know who my father is. And whether I'm sitting in front of, the, of a, a bishop or whether I'm sitting before the president of the United States, whether I'm sitting before an, an executive at a, at a, at a company, it, it doesn't matter who. I am a royal priesthood. Can I have an amen, y'all? This is part of the reason why some of, some of you, I'm going to be honest with you, some of you are not getting a job because you come in there like this. Can I, can I have the job? I don't, you know, maybe I can do it. And, 
And we come in like this. Well, who's going to want to hire you? I wouldn't even hire you at the church. Man, get your head up. Get, put a little something in your back. I'm coming up in here. I got the power of God on me. I got the grace of God on me. I'm anointed, and God is opening the door. I'm going to walk through this door, and I'm going to come in there, and if I don't know anything, if I don't know at all, I'm going to tell you I know where to find it at. I'm going to pray, and I'm going to study. I'm going to get in here and get this thing done. I know what to do. Go ahead and give me the job. I tell you, I got a blessing on my life. It's going to hit this business right now. Can I have an amen? <laughs> I'm done with y'all. I mean, but this is what I'm saying. We got to get out of this, woe is me. I'm, I'm, no, I'm, I'm royalty. But you broke. I'm royalty. But you got problems. I'm royalty. But I got issues in my life. I'm royalty. Can't you see it? I may not be perfect, I may not have it all together, but I am a royal priesthood, and no devil can stop me from being a royal priesthood. Woo, my goodness. But they lying on you, but I'm royalty. But they talking behind your back, I'm still royalty. They said you're never going to make it, I'm royalty. They said you'll never be nothing in your life, I know I am something, I'm royalty. A royal priesthood. Can I have an amen, y'all? We got to get back to knowing who we are and stop allowing the world to tell us who we are. They don't know us. How you coming here so bold? Because I'm a royal priest. Man, it seemed like you really flourished in on your job. That's the expectation. Because of God. Can I have an amen? I can't promise you we're going to win every time, but we're going to win more than we lose. Can I have an amen? That's, what, that's, how, it's, that's how we got to think. We got to get this back in our spirit. If you in sales, the expectation is you're going to sell. You're working in sales, I'm going to make some sales. Some of y'all working in sales, and y'all like, no, no, you tell yourself, you're going to make these sales, a lot of them, and they're going to move me up. Can I have an amen? But we got to get this out of our mind that the church is some weak, beggarly institution in the earth that has no power, no ability, and that the devil just runs us over. We got to start getting up and say, I'm a chosen generation. I'm a royal priesthood. And God is, that's why y'all don't know me, because I'm, I'm royal priesthood. Can I have an amen? Look what he says here. He says a royal priesthood. And then look at number three. He says a holy nation. We are a nation in the midst of the nations. So God has made you a holy nation. All of us is the people of God. And so we have to see that we are a called out company of people. We, can't, we have to stop being insecure and realize that it doesn't mean that we don't love the world and want to see people saved, but we want to bring people into that which God has established. That we are a, 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 a holy nation. He said a holy nation. Holy. Not defiled. But a holy nation. Well, what happens is God begins to establish us like this. And it's okay if the world rejects you. You found God. You found acceptance in God. And then we start living our lives as though we are a holy nation. And we've been talking about this a lot as a, as a, as a leadership team. You know, the problem that we have in this country is everybody wants you to join their team. You know, especially around all this political stuff. You got to join the team. Are you, are you a Republican? Are you a Democrat? You know, everybody wants you to join the team. And you got to fight. Well, what if I'm the referee? And I say, you over here, you got some stuff wrong with you. And you over here, you got some stuff wrong with you. And when you get out of line, I'm blowing the whistle on you. And when you get out of line, I'm blowing the whistle on you. 
Can I have an amen? I mean, that's the problem. Everybody wants to join the team. No, no, no. I'm a holy nation in the midst of a nation. And the church is called to be the referee to say, you, you got to repent and you, you got to repent too. Everybody's got to repent so we can all find God and God can do something in our lives. Can I have an amen, y'all? And like Minister Darlene said, the problem that you have, the ref, the ref, the ref, he's, he's the one that's making the calls. So when you make a supposedly bad call, you're the one that gets the booze. This is this Minister Darlene. She had this revelation. She said, Pastor, the, the, the refs are the ones that everybody is booing when they make a call. Depending on their team. Can I have an amen? And some, some people on the right, are, they're not going to like our calls. And some people on the left are not going to like our calls. And some people in the middle, they're not going to like our calls. But you still got to blow the whistle. And you still got to say, this isn't what God's saying. Open your Bible. I don't care what the culture says. Open your Bible and let's see what God says about this subject. And if he says it's wrong, then it's wrong. If he says it's right, then it's right. Beep! Can I have an amen, y'all? But the church, we over here and we over here and nobody knows. The church, our job is to blow the whistle. Say, God, we speak for God. And there's some good things you're doing over here. There's some good things you're doing over here. There's some bad things you're doing. But we're not jumping into the teams because we represent the king. Can I have an amen, y'all? And then we allow God to do it. We are a holy nation. Now watch this, y'all. His own special people, a peculiar people. And that means something to us. It should mean something to us that you you, you're special. Stop giving yourself to everything. Stop giving yourself to the world. Stop, stop being insecure about who you are. You're special. If you were the only person that needed salvation, Jesus Christ would have died for you. And you're not perfect. He didn't say you were perfect. He said that you were special. And the church, people can talk bad about the church. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring up stuff about the church, the stuff that God, that's going wrong in the church, the stuff we need to clean up. But saints, listen to me. The church is the best institute going on this planet. Amen. And what happens is we have to get in our mind that, man, I am special. I am. But brother, you did this wrong. I'm special, and God's working on me. And what you do is you get it in your mind that Jesus Christ went the extra mile for me. For me. How can I deny him? How can I turn my back on him? How can I say I'm not going to get involved in this and that? When I know he went the extra mile and died for me. And we don't have this urgency in our spirit anymore about, about Christianity and about the purpose of the church and about what God is doing. There's not the sense of urgency. People don't realize. Now, now hear me. Hear my heart, y'all. We're, 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 we're become so lackadaisical and we're just kind of going through life that we don't stop and consider that people are dying and going to hell every day. And we're sitting around trying to worry about how we can become more popular. And we're sitting around wondering how we can just get people to attend. I don't want people just to attend our church. I want people to become like Jesus. Can I have an amen? And then what happens is, is that we lost that sense of urgency where it's like, man, I want to do the best I can to represent God so somebody else's life can be changed. And as a result of it, we start getting to this place where we come, become so loose and we start losing the fact that we start losing the fact that, man, I'm special. 
his own special people. His own special people. Now look, and I'm going to say this in closing. He says his own special people that you, look at verse 9, may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light, who once were not a people, but are now the people of God, who had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. When we think about this and the magnitude of it, it should cause us to have great boldness in standing for God. That you serve a God that's made you a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a peculiar people. That you serve a God that has gone above and beyond to cause you to become a holy nation. And the world may not know you, but that's okay. Because he knows me. Don't we sing a song that says he knows my name? He knows my every thought. I mean, that he knows me. And that's okay. I remember when I was playing for the Raiders, I just got saved, and I was on fire for God, man. Really on fire. Deacon Rob, Elder Kenya, you know, I've been knowing these guys for over 20 some years, 25 years, whatever it is. And they were there, Kenyon and Deacon Rob, Elder Kenyon and Deacon Rob, they saw me get saved. When I gave my life to God, and Pam, you saw Pam, you know, I'm going to be honest with you. You know, I was, I, I felt like, like giving my life for God, knowing my past, that I had an obligation to run for him as fast as I could. So when I gave my life to God, I just, I went for it. Obviously, my wife was there. She saw the whole thing, and we both got saved at the same time. And we took off and just ran. And, you know, sometimes, you know, people would, like, call me crazy and stuff. But I just knew me. I had to go for this. But then I remember there were times when I was playing ball where it was like, it was like lonely. It was lonely because I'm on the team and I love God. I'm trying to do what's right. And, you know, there were guys that were unbelievers there. And then people were, you know, kind of, they didn't want to talk to me because, you know, I didn't, I wasn't, we just didn't identify with the same things. And then now it's like, you just a holy man. And I can remember literally two things. Number one, I used to, I used to come into the locker room and I would play my gospel music. And I would play my gospel music and just be playing my gospel music. And then when I would play my music, somebody would turn on their music and it was talking about bumping and grinding and cussing and fussing and, you know, and then they would turn theirs up louder to try to drown me out. But I just kept, you know, playing my music, worshiping God. And we, and we had a little fun with it. But then I remember one day I came in to my locker and my, and my box was gone. I was like, who stole my box? Somebody took my box. Somebody literally had stolen my stereo. I said, I'm going to get you, devil. <laughs> now listen to me, y'all. So they, they stole my box. I said, okay, that's all right. They start playing their music. But then their box busted. <laughs> their box, listen, their box busted and wouldn't work. Napoleon, did you do this to our box? No, I didn't touch it. I didn't touch your box. 
I didn't touch your boom box, man. I didn't have anything to do with that. But God don't like ugly. <laughs> and some one of y'all, what of y'all, what of y'all stole my box? If God don't like ugly. Now, you're, you, it don't even work. They turn it on. <laughs> See, you can't even get the beat out. The beat won't even come out. Uh-huh. I brought my box in. We praising God again. <laughs> I bought another box, brought it in. We praising God. This is the day that the Lord has made. That the Lord. Oh, okay. Then. <laughs> some, of y'all, some of y'all going back. But then, let me say this. But then, saints, there were times when I would be out there at practice. And I remember one day at practice. And it was a rough day. And guys kind of rejecting me and stuff and I'm sitting there I said Lord I I remember this I can remember where I was at on the field I said Lord well I guess it's just me and you (laughs) and I'm okay with that do you know that from that point we had such a powerful move of God on that team man guys started getting saved baptized guys in the whirlpool at the facility giving bibles away it was like a powerful move of god just swept through the whole team you know and i'm saying this to you to say this they don't know you but that's okay continue to be authentically you in christ and then watch god start fighting for you As a church, we cannot, we cannot be so insecure that we start changing to get acceptance. Let's be who God has created us to be. And then he turns around and then he starts, if he gets lifted up, he'll start drawing all men to himself. And you'll find that the same ones that were giving you the hard time are the same ones that God starts drawing into the house of God. And then they start getting saved. Can I have an amen? Thank you for joining us for Times of Refreshing. This program is a production of the Well Christian Community. You can learn more about our church and the various ministries we offer by visiting us on the web at www.thewellchurch.net or by calling our office at 925-479-1414. Or if you're looking for a church home or visiting the Livermore area, we would love for you to come by and visit us. Our service times are Sunday, 10.30 a.m. We are located at 2333 Nissan Drive in Livermore, California, 94551. For direction to our church, call us at 925-479-1414. Until next time, may Jesus Christ be highly exalted in your life, and may His Word bring you a peace that transcends all understanding.